So yesterday, I heard rumors around here, and that's normally about as far as they get with me. I don't get to be on the editorial staff. Let me correct you. I ask not to be on the editorial staff because there's too many meetings. So I let Trey Scott handle all that. I just show up five minutes before the show and, and hope that we stay on air. But sometimes I hear rumors around here. And so let me paint you a little picture. Here's the scene tomorrow morning at 24-7 Sports. There's a lot of hustle and bustle. It's a Friday morning. It's a release morning. And there's a lot of suspicion around here tomorrow morning. And there's a lot of distrust and looking over shoulders. And there is probably an entire HR department on a roller coaster's morning trying to remember how they handle espionage and how they handle a mole. Well, if you'll lean in right quick, I'm the leak. I'm the mole. Tomorrow morning, the rumor, as it turns out, was true. They're releasing the 24-7 Sports True Freshman All-American team. But I got the entire list right here. So allow me to share this highly confidential information for you. The whole thing releases tomorrow morning, but I got one, two, three. I'm going to tell you five of them right off the top. Mason Smith at LSU is one of our true freshman All-Americans. 6'5", 315. Now, this guy was a five-star in every sense of the word when he committed to LSU. Big defensive lineman, big time prospect in high school. And also, if you'll think about where LSU was last year, it's not very much. It wasn't very good defensively, and they couldn't stop the run to save their life. And so not only did Ed Orgeron obviously know he had to hit the reset button at everything up to and including defensive coordinator, but also, you know, when you bring in Durante Jones and you and he and your entire defensive staff, you do an assessment, it would never benefit you more than it does right now to give everybody open access to these starting spots. Now, LSU, contrary to popular belief, will not be a sieve defensively, far from it up front defensively this year. They feel exceptionally good, unlike last year, about the depth and talent and skill and versatility that they have along the defensive line. But Mason Smith, even having said all that, you look at this resume here, he will factor in, and he will factor in heavily. Now, they got Farrell and Logan. Glenn Logan's been hurt. I think he'll eventually be back. But you got Evans. You got, of course, Smith. Uh, you got Roy. They've got a lot of really, really good bodies that they can rotate on the interior alone of the defensive line. But I was hitting up someone really close to the program today, and I said, I want you to take your best guess. I mean, this is someone who, who has their ear very much up against the pulse of every day-to-day -day practice. And I said... If I were to take Mason Smith and I asked you how many snaps you think he'll be playing in games early in the year, the guess was about 30 to 40 snaps against UCLA. If it's a normal game, 70 to 80 snaps in a game, uh, that is heavy rotation. And so they feel really good where they are now. But, you know, Glenn Logan or no Glenn Logan, Mason Smith's going to factor in. So that's one of our true freshmen All-American. How about Javari Ritzy? Same position, different university. Let's go to North Carolina. Javari Ritzy is going to be a true freshman All-American for the preseason, at least here. 6'5", 285. Uh, this is a guy, along with Keyshawn Silver, two of the hallmarks of North Carolina's signing class. Regardless of whether it says starter next to their name, these, again, are guys who are going to factor in very heavily this year. And when you talk to coaches about Ritzy, and you talk to people on the North Carolina staff about Ritzy, they say motor is there, strength is there leverage everything that we need from a raw god-given standpoint is there techniques never it's never been anything about other than technique with him and it's not something that there's a grand canyons gap between him right now and being able to get on the field but when he came in there that was the talk that's still the talk he'll get it at some point this year he'll get it and so it's not necessarily just a week one thing with a guy like javari ritzy check on check on him in week one when they play virginia tech but then come back in week six or week seven, you know, when Miami's coming in there and it's the midpoint of the season, you've reached the teeth of your conference schedule. And then ask me how many snaps per game Javari Ritzy, Keyshawn Silver, guys like that are getting. Because I think that number in the second half of the season will be a whole lot higher. Now let's go to Texas. And we didn't think we were going to be saying the University of Texas with this name, but we are. Another true freshman, All-American, for 24-7 sports in the preseason is Xavier Worthy. Absolutely. Probably the biggest slam dunk or one of the biggest slam dunks that I saw on this list. He's a wide receiver. He's 6'1", about 170 pounds. An unexpected addition to this Texas signing class. And the reason is because I sat right here at this desk and made a huge deal on signing day about him going to Michigan. Well, it turns out he didn't go to Michigan. He ends up at Texas. 
and a lot of folks in Ann Arbor are salty about it. You have reason to be. I've heard your excuses. They are valid. But that doesn't change the fact that he's going to be dressing for Texas this year. And I think he's going to be starting as a true freshman for Texas this year. Remember what Texas has lacked, namely speed at the receiver position, which is why I have never really gotten into this whole Texas has got a lot of talent. Look at the team talent composite. They should be winning games. I could have 47 five-star linebackers on my team and be really high in the 24-7 team talent composite. I'm going to suck because I don't have it evenly distributed. Well, one of the places that Texas has had critical under – oh, boy, Colin, how about this word? Distribution. Distribution. Yeah, that's what I wanted to go with. Under distribution of that talent, it's been receiver. They had had speed, man. They can't pop the top off defenses. Well, Xavier Worthy can. Steve Sarkeesian knows that. And that's why right in, in camp, not even the season, in camp, he's been right at the forefront of all the conversations. You go over to Horns 24-7. You, you read Chip Brown's practice reports. You, you read Mike Roach and the folks over there. All they talk about when they talk about receiver is got to fill out from a depth perspective, but Xavier Worthy has been one of the mainstays. you got Whittington. Uh, you got O'Meary. I'm not discounting more. I know he's there. When I've spoken about the quality depth here, I'm talking about having dudes like Alabama's had. I'm talking about lacking those kinds of dudes. Xavier Worthy was recruited by Alabama for a reason. He is one of those kind of dudes. Michigan got him, but now his home is Austin, Texas. So Xavier Worthy is going to be maybe not the finest technician in the world in 2021, but a huge weapon for Texas in 2021. Let's go out to the West Coast. Corey Foreman, former number one player in the country, also a 24-7 sports consensus preseason All-American. 6'4", 265 defensive lineman, huge deal for USC to keep him home. That goes without saying. But also, you've got elite pass rush traits here. And unlike some of the time, especially at this kind of position where you get a guy with five stars next to his name in, but he's kind of raw, from a college perspective, and so he doesn't immediately get on the field and flash in week one or week two, Corey Foreman's there. Those defensive coaches at Southern Cal have gushed about him, and they don't have to. They are volunteering this information. So he is going to be right there, a central part of their defensive approach with Drake Jackson on the other side. Those two are going to make up one of the best pass rushing duos in the country much less on the West Coast. Now, Kayvon Thibodeau up at Eugene will get a ton of run, as he should. He's probably the best defensive player in the country, along with Derek Stingley in the preseason at least. But these two right here, you're talking about pass rushing duos. Uh, Drake Jackson, Corey Foreman, if he fulfills half of the hype that his own coaching staff has created for him, they'll be a force. I mean, that's a game-changing duo that you potentially have there. And speaking of Oregon, and speaking of weaponry that I wanted to talk about from earlier in the show, Boy, Troy Franklin's a good football player. You don't know him unless you're probably around Oregon and you follow recruiting. Troy Franklin is a big-bodied, true freshman receiver, 6'3", 170. And the wide receiver culture is about to change, in large part because of Troy Franklin at Oregon. Uh, this has been a ground-and-pound team as of late, and that's going to change. you got other guys like Dante Thornton in the mix here. They brought in several true freshman skill guys that I think are about to flip that entire, ugh, that dirty word narrative. They're going to flip it. I tried to retire the word yesterday to no avail. So that N word, that narrative, yeah, they're going to flip that thing up at Oregon. And he's going to be a big reason why. And let me also tell you, much like Xavier Worthy at Texas, it hasn't mattered. It hasn't mattered that that TFR is next to his name. He's walked right in. He's running with the ones at X receiver. And so the other good news, especially for Troy Franklin, is he doesn't have to shoulder the load. They've got excellent tailback skill there. Troy Franklin is surrounded by several other big-time receivers that could start at a lot of programs. And so Oregon has got, again, on paper, they got all the talent in the world that should spell a pretty high-level offense this year. We're going to wait and see, but that's what it should look like at Oregon this year. So those are five true freshman All-Americans, Mason Smith, Javari Ritzy, Xavier Worthy, Corey Foreman, Troy Franklin. Arrest me if you have to, but sometimes you just got to leak sensitive information around here.